This is the Clapache from Work Tough Gear, a compact, lightweight, do-all companion knife. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to thank Work Tough Gear for sending me the Clapache so that I could share it with you. So what we'll do is I'll share the uh, specifications for this knife, and as I do, I'll give you some close-ups. I'll also talk about its design intent and the designer himself, and then, of course, we'll do some demonstrations. All right, let me focus in a little closer on the knife. Once again, this is the Clapache from Work Tough Gear, and you can see the Work Tough Gear logo on the blade on that side and on the other side. You can see the name Clapache and the logo for Inner Bark Outdoors, which is Andy Tran, very popular on YouTube and has a number of very successful knives in his uh, history. So what I'll do in a few minutes time is go through Andy's vision for this knife and what he saw it all about. But first, let's go through a few specifications. So the overall length for this knife is seven inches, 178 millimeters, blade length, 3.5 inches or 89 millimeters, Blade thickness, look at that, very thin, 2.5 millimeters or 0.09 eighths of an inch. Not a lot of knives come out in these days that thin, but it has some real advantages we'll talk about in a minute. It has a saber grind with a secondary edge that has been convexed and polished by Work Tough Gear. That's a kind of one of their trademarks on most of their knives. The steel is SK85, hardened to 56 to 58 on the Rockwell scale. And the finish on this is an ashed stone wash finish. The handles are black G10 with red liners, makes it stand out very nice. The weight of this knife is a scant five ounces or 142 grams. And with the sheath, that'll bump it up to 6.4 ounces or 181 grams. Now, let me just share the sheath with you. So it came in this Kydex sheath and like everything that comes from Work Tough Gear, it just snaps in and it's there very, very securely. I have it on a length of paracord. I've been wearing it as a neck knife. And even though it, it has a little bit of weight to it at just over five ounces, or I guess 6.4 with the sheath, it's not so heavy that I really notice it at all. But in, at, all, at all times, I know that I have a very capable small knife at ready access, which is what this is all about. And I'll share more about my experiences using it in a few moments time. All right, let's take a closer look at the knife in terms of what Andy had in mind. So Andy saw this as a companion knife. This is not a primary knife, but a backup knife or a secondary knife to a larger cutting tool, whether it be a large field knife or an ax. This is the small knife that you carry around your neck or in your pocket and is accessible for all the small tasks that you don't want to have to use that large tool for. And it's for that reason that it has these design features. So you can see that it is a spear point design. However, it is center line to the blade, which makes it capable of drilling into the wood for things like bow drill divots. And it will do that very well. It is very thin, and you would wonder about batoning a knife this thin, but because of the height through here, there is plenty, plenty of metal for doing batoning within reason, of course. It's still a small knife, just the same. The handle we'll talk more about in a second, but I think one thing that draws everybody's attention is this hole right here. What is that all about? Andy's intent for that hole is to remove bullets from the shell casings for 223 ammunition, which is also known as 5.56 NATO, so that you you can access the powder for fire lighting if you need to do so. It has a very sharp spine on the back for scraping. In fact, it's so sharp you can actually feel it like a burr on the edge. Very good at scraping fat wood, bark, and of course, ferrocerium rods. Now, the shape of the handle. It's not all that big, and as people know, I have an extra large hand, so I wondered when I got this if I could find this not comfortable, but usable. Comfort would be secondary. This is meant to me primarily as a neck knife. That's the way I've been carrying it. But is it functional and yes very much so even though my hand is large and engulfs this and makes it disappear inside I still feel as if I have full control over the knife and I can use it for all the tasks you would use a knife this size for make no mistake it's not a full-size belt knife it won't do everything a full-size belt knife will do but it'll do a lot of them and of course at a small more compact nature do you know one of the things that you can look at this knife as is it's not only a companion knife to back up a larger knife or a choice uh, in in addition to a larger knife 
but this could act as your EDC, everyday carry knife. So along with that sheath, that Kydex sheath, if you mounted a clip on it like an Ulti clip, you could put this in your pocket, front or back pocket, and use it in place of a folding knife. And it would do very well, but of course be much more capable than any folding knife would be. So it's a good option in that terms if you want to look at it from that in that manner. Now, as far as holding this knife goes, you can see it has quite a distinct uh, drop towards the rear where it thickens up and a lot of choil area up here. Now this bump on top does act as a thumb ramp but really there's no grip there. It's more of a reference point when you're holding it. So what are my experiences in actually holding this and doing to, uh, 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 tasks with it? Well, yes, it does swallow up in my hand and it does disappear, but even so, I do feel like I have all the control necessary so I can hold it in the forward grip like this. I can hold it in a side grip for doing tasks like a chest lever grip. And I can even hold it in upside down grip, blade down if you would, tip down, so that I can do stabbing motions into wood, which I'll do sometimes very small splits of wood. Now, as far as using this for tacks out in the wood, I have done fire preparation. Now, it's not the large knife that would split down the large pieces of wood, but this will certainly baton smaller pieces of wood, say be thumb size or even a tiny bit thicker. It'll do that with ease, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. It will scrape, as I mentioned, and it will uh, scrape uh, a ferrocerium rod as well, and it will do that drilling action, as I mentioned as well. So the other thing I've been using this knife for is and this sounds a little funny, of course, but I used it as a kitchen knife for a month. I just wanted to see how this would work in food preparation around the kitchen. And it functions very well. And that is due to two, two things. One, the very thin nature of the steel and the fairly high saber grind on the side. Very, very slicey little knife. Uh, now, as far as comments on the steel itself, it's held its edge. It hasn't had any damage. In fact, right now I can feel that it's still very, very sharp. And the most I've done with this since I got it a few months ago has been to strop it. I haven't had to put it to steel or stone or ceramic or stone at all. But I do want to give you some close-ups of it. Now this has that acid wash finish on it. And you can see it taking on a patina, mostly from the kitchen work that I did. But one of the things I noticed as well is you do have to wipe this knife off. And I think it's in part not only because it's carbon steel, but because of the acid wash finish, it will rust fairly quickly. And, I, and the most I've found, though, just a couple of dots of rust on it, it and not really like a frank outright rusting. But you do have to make sure it's dry before you put it back in its sheath. Other than that, the maintenance on, maintenance on this knife has been very good. Vic knows how to heat treat his steels. And even though it is considered to be uh, just an entry grade carbon steel at SK85, Vic knows how to get the most out of his steels. And this is working very, very well yet remains very easy to sharpen. Again, I haven't had to do so. Well, okay, I, I don't consider stropping sharpening, but maintaining the edge was easy, but I expect when I do have to put it to stone or ceramic that it will come back to full sharpness very, very quickly. All right, so that is this knife in a more or less a nutshell. Let's do a few light demonstrations with it. Okay, I'm gonna keep the demonstrations to a minimum with this knife because as a companion knife or back half knife, this isn't your primary knife. This isn't the one I would use for my major wood processing, but just to show that it is capable of it and uh, you can use it for certainly a lot of the small tasks like carving, let's do exactly that. So the wood that I'm going to be batoning, I previously split into quarters. This is sugar maple or rock maple. It is dry, but it's still in very good hard condition, known to be a very tough wood to work with, but I thought that would be a good demonstration. This piece runs about 15, 16 inches long, and uh, what we'll do is we'll split this down, let's say once in this direction, And it's surprising how easily this knife will slide through. I'm just lightly tapping, of course, down on the knife. There, okay. I think that's, you know, really how much uh, batoning do you want me to show you that show you that this knife is capable of it. I'm gonna keep that one for some light feather sticking. Let's, maybe I'll baton it one more time. Oh, get that out of the way. 
Okay, so actually I think this did most of the work for me, the way it split off. Get to a nice fine edge very, very quickly like that. I'm going to, let's see, I'm still on camera. Yep, I'm going to do a little cross baton as if I was making a tent peg out of this. Just a little tap. Not too deep. Notch into the stop cut I just created. Clean it out. Clean it out a little bit more. There we go, that's better. And just like that, basically, I've created a tent peg. So it shows that it's capable of notching and the cross batoning that you would do, you would want your knife to do. So very, very simple. All right, let's set up and do a little bit of feather sticking. All right, so the, here's that split that I split out of the larger piece of wood. We can probably get a few curls on this. I won't do a massive feather stick, but I want to show that it is capable of some very, very fine curls. Now, make no mistake, this is still a small knife, so this is knife the, not the knife I would choose to do feather sticking with, but it is capable of it. And the reason I said I wouldn't choose to it because it is still a relatively small grip, secure in my hand, yes, but it's still going to get me, it's still going to get a little tiring after a while. So, I'm taking my blade and just holding it against the stick, trying to find a place that I'll probably start. And I'm just going to lift it slightly to just enough so that the blade does grab into the wood. And slowly, the first number of curls can be very thin and you don't want to lose them because they're going to form the anchor point for the rest of your curls. Maintaining that angle. Now, the question is, is this doing this as well as a dedicated bushcraft knife with a Scandi grind? No, not quite as well, but you know, it's still doing pretty good. Even with the grind that it has, it's just a matter of finding what the right angle is. And the thinness of the steel certainly helps when it comes to gliding through the wood. Actually, I'm actually very impressed how well it's working with this rock maple. It can be hard to curve sometimes. I'm only doing one side of the stick for this demonstration purposes, but uh, I think you're getting the idea. Let's see, how many times can I get that to curl? Vary the angle. I'm going to run the down on this angle. About five curls that time. A little bit more. And you want to get right down to some very, very fine curls. All right, I think that's enough to show that you can create feather sticks with this little knife. Maybe not as easily as a dedicated bushcraft knife, but it still works, obviously. One more little demonstration. All right, one last demonstration with the clapache, and that's just to do a little scraping of some fat wood and light it up with a ferrocerium rod. So kind of an awkward little piece, but wow. All right, it's taking off scrapings in a hurry. Now, the trick is going to be not to lose them because it's windy here. Let's see if we can keep them on without losing them. Good old fat wood. Nothing like fat wood for getting a fire started. Now, if I was going to build up a fire, of course, I'd be starting to run little splits off the end of this stick that I would add to this little pile. This stuff is like crystals. It's so hard. All right, that's enough just to, for the demonstration. Fat, one thing fat wood does, though, it gums up your knife. So you have to make sure you clean it off afterwards. All right, ferrocerium rod. Plant that somewhere near there. And that's better. 
Yep, I'd say it does that job as well. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Clipache from Work Tough Gear. So my final thoughts are, what a nice little knife. Regardless if you look at this as a companion knife to go along with a larger cutting tool like a field knife or an axe, or if you look at it as an EDC, everyday carry knife that you can put in your pants pocket or hang around your neck and have it with you at all times, no matter where you are, it fits both of those roles very, very well. One of the things that stands out for me in performance of this knife is just how slicey it is. I first noticed that when I was using it for food preparation at home and was very, very impressed. And of course, that is because a combination of the height of the blade, the saber grime, and the thin stock just lead to a very slicey knife. There's no other way to describe it. But at the same time, still remains very strong. You might think a knife with that thin a metal, that thin an edge, is going to be fragile, not the case at all. Again, because of the height of the blade and the grind where it comes to a spear point, I didn't demonstrate it, but I have done drilling tasks where you're trying to create a divot in a piece of wood. Uh, you can do that very easily with this knife. I have no fear at all that I'm going to cause it any damage. So would it replace my primary belt knife? Probably not but I wouldn't hesitate to grab this for all the tasks I demonstrated already. And one of the things I really like using it for, as I mentioned already, is food preparation. But it is capable of all those other tasks. I think that's important to point out. It is a little small overall for my hand, but because of the shape of that grip, it still works. It still fits. It's still, what's back here, this width back here, goes into where the palm or the palm swell of most knives go. That's where that ends up. So it still gives me lots of control. Yeah, it really does. That's, that's a really nice design feature. Andy did a really good job putting this knife together and it was meant to be a simple companion knife from his definition but I think it's capable you know it could even be a primary knife uh, if you're going ultra light and you're just looking for something to do very light tasks you have no wood processing processing in mind maybe this is your primary knife for those situations okay that's everything I have to say about the knife. It is definitely up to the standard of work tough gear quality in terms of all the knives that I've tested with them. I continue to be impressed with what Vic at Work Tough Gear is putting out. And of course, these designs are not Vic's. They come from people who really know, not to say that Vic doesn't know, but they come from other designers, people who have experience designing and building knives like Andy Tram. And uh, it speaks well of Vic that he will like license these and build these and put them up for sale at a more reasonable price. Quality is definitely there. Attention to detail is definitely there. Again, if there was one con for this knife that I had to look for something, it's not the blade steel, it's the blade finish. I think it is anyway, because I like SK85, especially the way Work Tough Gear he treats it. But I have seen this not just tarnish or take a patina because that doesn't bother me but that it can be prone to a little bit of rust it shouldn't bother me right because this all your knives you should be maintaining i guess what i'm thinking is if i'm carrying this as a neck knife i want to have it i'm going to be using it in a, a potentially moist or damp conditions um, you're not always taking the time to look at it and uh, make sure that it's as clean and dry as it should be uh, that's my bad if you do that, if you maintain your knife, it's going to serve you for a long period of time. Had it been made in stainless steel of some type, I think it would have been just that much better. Vic, maybe you're listening and maybe you'll come up with this in some type of stainless steel as well. Okay, that's everything I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments about the, about the Clapache, then please put them in the comments section below. All the specifications as well as the links to where you can purchase this from Work Tough Gear will be in the video description. All right, get out and explore and take that path. Let's travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.